What's up, everyone? John from ARTV. It's time for another episode of my series, Dear John. Dear John is normally where I go and take a detailed viewer question from you guys and then answer it in video form because it's something that I feel needs a longer explanation. But today, I have made an exception to do my first ever formal outside of a live stream Q&A where I asked you guys to just leave me questions, ones that could be answered simply in videos and just so you get to know me better, I guess. Don't you want to know your old pal, John? Sorry in advance, I couldn't answer everything. I had over 450 comments and questions come in on the last episode where I asked you to leave comments. So yeah, I picked the ones that I felt are the best and I'm actually just gonna be doing this in real time, going through the video, looking at the comments and answering the ones that I feel are informative or else interesting. On with the show, here we go. Dear John, answer all of my questions. Dear John, do you have theme songs for certain events in your life? Kind of hard to pinpoint that one just because there's so many different songs that define different things for me, but I did make a video, like a song for every year of my life, so I would recommend watching that. And uh, also, just in terms of general anthems, I don't know, I Just Had Sex by The Lonely Island comes to mind. Can you do a face reveal? Magic. What will it take for alternative rock to climb back up the charts and dominate like it used to? I feel like it's been dead since the late 2000s. Number one, I think it's going to take an awakening within our culture to realize that we need something more than just the bottom of the barrel of garbage that we're getting these days. It's going to take people wanting something of talent and substance, but as long as we keep passing off every SoundCloud rapper that comes through and praising them as some sort of great thing, then I don't see rock making a huge comeback in the world of mainstream. I just hope it doesn't ever get to the point where it's like jazz, where jazz is still listened to, but it is such a minority that if you mention the most jazz artists to people in general in the mainstream, they're gonna have no idea who the hell it is. I really hope that that's not Rock's fate. But I think in order for it to come back big and strong, it's going to take some very interesting acts and just people gravitating towards it once again. Dear John, obviously you mostly review and talk about recent music within the past 20 years. I'd like to know how far in time does your music taste go? I know you like the Beatles, but what about the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, The Doors, Elvis? Do you actually listen to any kind of music from the 50s or earlier? This is a good question, and unfortunately, I. Do don't get to listen to as much of the oldies as I'd like to, a lot of that classic rock and even stuff of earlier times. I was introduced to a lot of other music, music of like the days of the Victrola, if anyone's familiar with that style of like a music player. I believe that was prevalent in like the 30s and the 40s. That was one of the first things that my parents ever played music on for me. So I'm very familiar with like big band and uh, jazz music, at least uh, in terms of hearing it. I couldn't name particular artists, but I was always familiar with it growing up. I can't say that I listened to really anything pre-60s, at least not on a regular basis, but the ones that you named there, I do listen to all of those. I spent some time not too long ago going through the Doors' discography. Obviously, I've been through the Beatles as many times, and I'd love to someday, if I ever get the time, do a top 10 and a ranked, but that's going to take a lot of listening. But I do like a lot of classic rock. I just don't know as much as I probably should, and unfortunately, it's just because of time and listener fatigue. A lot of the times, I get so tired of listening to current stuff that if I have spare time, I'm going to do anything other than listen to music. What do you think the future is for Linkin Park? Do you think they will continue as a five piece because of the sudden death of Chester Bennington? I would love to know your opinion. There's no way that I see Linkin Park stopping now, especially with Mike Shinoda's statements that he's issued. It seems like the band is pretty strongly set in the fact that they will in some way, shape or form continue. It might not be right away. Obviously Mike Shinoda is doing some solo stuff, playing some solo festival shows and that sort of thing. I am excited to see what they will do in the future and how they will make Chester proud. Do you ever listen to the roots of pop punk and emo? How do you feel about Captain Jazz, Moss Icon, Sunny Day Real Estate, Ramones, The Queers, Descendants, etc.? Absolutely I do. I don't spend a ton of time listening to all those bands, but Captain Jazz, especially Sunny Day Real Estate, I really got into them. Funny story there, I used to work at a movie theater and my manager gave me their CD, their debut album, Diary. And that album I find to be absolutely fantastic. He told me that, you know, obviously if you're into like modern emo, these are like the godfathers of emo. 
And yeah, that kind of sparked something in me to check out other bands. I haven't listened to like all of the ones listed in that comment, but uh, The Descendants, uh, obviously Captain Jazz and uh, Sunny Day Real Estate. Yeah, those are all favorites of mine. Hey John, your channel is cool, dude. I think I saw you at Panera. It wasn't me, I don't eat there. What's your top 15 favorite classic rock songs? I have no fucking clue. How about I just name 15 off the top of my head? Strawberry Fields Forever, The Beatles, uh, wow, this is harder than I thought already. Great Big in the Sky, Pink Floyd, uh, God, the clock is ticking here. Um, God, I'm glad there's not a timer on me. Oh boy. Landslide, Fleetwood Mac, Bob Dylan, Tangled Up in Blue, The Doors, Riders on the Storm, whew. Clock ticking over here. Ooh, things get intense. I have no idea how many I've even done so far. Is that 15? We're gonna say it's 15. Long comment here, but dear John, how do you separate your personal life from the music? How do you not let certain songs be hard to listen to due to recent or current circumstances in your life? At this point in time, I am going through one of the hardest things a teen goes through, my first relationship. Things were amazing at the start, but recently seeming to fall apart. Well, in order to answer that comment, I think that you have to say that uh, I don't necessarily just listen to it and it's okay. I mean, at this point it is, but even back in the day when I would listen to those songs when I was a teenager, when I went through my first breakup and everything like that, I would still listen to the songs because I found them therapeutic in a way. And I think that listening to music can be painful, but it's a good kind of pain because it helps you know that somebody else is there. Somebody else either went through the pain or, you know, took the pain out on somebody else and you can see a different point of view and you can see that maybe you are somehow not alone. And that's how I felt like uh, when I was going through these situations. I just remember certain times, like I would go out and like walk my dog at night back when I was like 13, 14, and I was going through like a rough situation with a relationship and I didn't know what was going on. And I would like play the song Speed of Sound by Coldplay on my Motorola Racer. Wow, I could only hold like three songs on there, but that was one of the ones that I would play. But I just have specific memories of that song and it really helped me get through that time so I have to say don't ignore the songs don't try to be like this song owns that relationship that I was in or that was our song take back control and take the pain away what do you think about bands changing up their original style I think there's a time and a place for bands evolving and changing and trying new things and it's never gonna be good to do the exact same thing over and over and over again. I think we've seen some bands beat that into the ground, but at the same time, this whole new trend of, we're just trying to rediscover everything about us, it's not exactly the best thing, because it seems like these days, everybody's idea of reinventing themselves is going top 40 pop. Do you have any favorite British bands? Uh, well, yeah, absolutely, I sure do. The majority of my favorite bands of the 2010s, I would say, at least in like the synth pop and rock world, are from the UK. They have a lot better of a music scene, at least in my opinion, compared to the US. And I did an entire video on UK bands over on Beyond AR TV, my favorite ones to be more specific, if you would like to check that out. Do you have high hopes for the American Idiot movie? Well, it's Green Day, and obviously if this actually happens, I am going to be all over that. I think that it could be great. I want Billy Joe and the guys to be involved. It was great when Billy Joe was on Broadway for American Idiot the Musical on Broadway, and I think that if he has some sort of involvement and some sort of say in in the movie, then it could be a great thing. So I'm stoked on it. There's a great story there to be made, and if they're able to do it justice, then yeah, it could be fantastic. But I will keep those expectations somewhere in the moderately low level, just so I don't get disappointed. Who slash what are some of your favorite rappers or hip hop albums? I know you're mainly an alt rock pop punk guy with some pop, but I rarely see you talk about hip hop on here aside from an occasional review. Well, it's true that I don't cover a ton of hip hop, but I feel like there's so many people on YouTube that just exclusively cover hip hop that I am in my own lane, and obviously hip hop and rap is not my favorite thing in the world. I know I bash on trap a lot, but that does not apply to all of rap, and I do have some rappers that I absolutely love. I love Run the Jewels, Brock Hampton, uh, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, and uh, I've recently gotten into a little bit of some older stuff. I like N.W.A. 
uh, Dr. Dre's solo stuff, even some early Snoop Dogg, and some even later Snoop Dogg. Uh, I enjoy quite a bit of rap, it's just that where it's headed at this point, I'm not on board with. Oh, and 50 Cent, shout out to 50 Cent, one of my favorite rappers from when I was a teenager, and obviously Eminem as well. Dear John, what's your current turntable setup? Well, right now I am using an ATLP60, the Audio Technica, and I am using that with some Logitech speakers because I uh, don't have tons of money to go out and spend on a great speaker system, but it does sound fine for what I'm using it for, which is recreational record listening. They've got a subwoofer, they've got a couple of good speakers that came with them, they weren't that expensive, but it gets the job done, and I enjoy listening to records as a result. It's much better than just listening to it on some really crappy speakers, but I acknowledge that they're not the best speakers in the world. Ooh, this is a tough one. What is your favorite song from each Paramore album? Let's start from the beginning. This is at least going to be current favorites for me right now. We will start with 2005's All We Know Is Falling. That would be my heart. Then we move over to Riot, and that would be Let the Flames Begin. And then we have Brand New Eyes, and we've got Playing God. Then we have on the self-titled 2013 album. For that one, it is tough for me, and there's a lot of changing around. But I would personally probably have to go with part two, which I know I said let the flames begin, and that is part two. But it would either be part two or else fast in my car as of now. And then, obviously, we have one final album, that is After Laughter. And currently, I am probably digging the most from that LP. Ooh, this is, ooh, it's like picking your favorite kid. I don't know, there's so many good ones bouncing around. I've really been into pool recently, but I know that that's like, kind of like a fleeting favorite, probably. Overall, ah, I'm not gonna answer. I've got a top 15 dropping soon. What do you think is the best band to come out of grunge besides Nirvana or Foo Fighters? Well, I, I really dig, obviously, Soundgarden. Chris Cornell had the voice of an angel. The dude could sing his ass off, rest in peace. Uh, Silver Chair were good uh, from that time period. Uh, even some Toadies stuff that had a little bit of that grunge feeling to it. Uh, there was many great great bands really popping up during that time. It just got a bit oversaturated. But uh, I also really like Pearl Jam from that time period. Uh, a couple of their albums from the 90s, man, just really still pop off to this day. Dear John, do you wholeheartedly believe Hannah is the one? Yes. What do you think of metal bands like Marilyn Manson, Korn, Nine Inch Nails, and Metallica? Do you like the metal genre? Those aren't exactly like huge names other than Metallica, obviously, that I normally think of when I think metal, but I think that a lot of them, I guess, do have heavier tendencies and influences in their music, but I think that Metallica would be the only one that I would actually consider metal out of those. Maybe like industrial metal for Nine Inch Nails, some in Marilyn Manson's early works and even some of his 2000s stuff. And Korn, I suppose, yeah, I could get the hard rock and metal vibe from a lot of their stuff. It's just that I think more terms apply. But metal overall, I'm not usually super into, especially like heavy metal and that sort of thing. But all of the bands that were listed right there, I'm actually a pretty big fan of. Metallica I got into because of my friend Coleman growing up. He was super into bands like that. And he had a lot of CDs from his dad from like the 80s and the 90s. And we would listen to them after school a lot of the time. That was eighth grade. Wow. Thinking back on that, that was a long time ago. Uh, Marilyn Manson, yeah, I got into that because of the channel Fuse. And I remember thinking, wow, this dude looks insane, but I like the music. And Korn, it was kind of a similar thing. I kind of thought Jonathan Davis looked weird, but I got into Twisted Transistor. Heard some of their older stuff and Nine Inch Nails, of course. Downward Spiral and many of the other works that Trent Reznor has just been a part of. His film soundtracks, his scores. I like everything that the man does. Not every single song, but I'm usually invested in wanting to check out whatever project he's touching on. Considering you review many things relating to music, have you ever considered playing a musical instrument? Why or why not? Well, I actually played piano for probably about eight years growing up, but I was never very good at it, and I have a hard time getting a sense of like rhythm and melody and reading music and everything like that. My mom is, or I guess I should say, was a piano teacher. She taught music in school and she also taught private piano lessons. And I surprised her on my fifth birthday and I actually signed up, signed up, quote unquote, for her piano lessons. And that made her very happy. I quit a few times because I really didn't like it. And then I would like surprise her on Mother's Day or something and start up again. And I say like 
for eight years. It was probably more like five. It just felt like longer to me because I wasn't really a fan of it. And I wanted to learn the guitar, but my parents weren't really for that. And my dad was not really wanting to buy me an electric guitar because, you know, uh, devil's music, everything like that. Not really. He didn't feel that strongly. He just didn't want to hear it in the house. He didn't want to hear drums in the house or a bass guitar. So piano it was and uh, piano it wasn't because I never really kept up with it. I still own a keyboard and I can't really play that much. I can pick up some melodies by ear and I bought a guitar once and then I had to take it back because I realized I don't have the money for this. As much as I would love to play the guitar, I just do not think that I have the rhythm and the patience for it. So therefore, no, I don't plan on taking up an instrument anytime soon. Why don't you review deluxe slash extended versions of albums? Because they truly care about the songs on the standard edition the most. Those are the ones that the artists and bands fight for. And these days, I think the deluxe is kind of going by the wayside, at least somewhat because of streaming and everything like that. Bands want to have more songs so that they have more of a shot at getting more streams and getting higher on the charts and that sort of thing. So I don't think the deluxe editions are always going to be this big thing. Obviously, there's going to be reissues and that sort of thing. But I just don't really care about reviewing it because I only care about the standard because those are the ones that the artist or band believed in the most and said these have to make the album and all of the deluxe editions and that sort of thing they just get too long i don't i don't really care especially these rap albums that'll be like uh you know 13 songs say on the standard and then it'll be like a 20 song 21 song deluxe i ain't got time like tyler the creator said my question is where'd the time go right out the window i really enjoy listening to paramore and i showed it to my friends and they kept teasing me and saying that it is a girly band do you think that Paramore is a girly band? And should I stop listening to Paramore because I am embarrassed? Whoa, hell no, of course you should not stop listening. Absolutely not. Um, listen, Smeagol Juicy Fish, listen to me right now. Your friends that are making fun of you are gonna be the same ones that either just like open up emotionally in their 20s and just have like an out pouring of all these feelings and they start sobbing all the time because they kept it all bottled up because they're manly or whatever it is. But Paramore might have more like female driven tendencies because of the lyrical content from Haley, but they're by no means, I would say a girly band. I mean, that term in general just kind of seems weird. I mean like, oh, the, this is only music for girls or only music for guys. That just, that seems weird. Like a girl can't listen to metal because it's all, <laughs> And then, you know, a guy can't listen to Paramore because it's all like, just let me cry a little bit longer. It makes no sense. Kindly tell them that you will continue listening to whatever floats your boat. And if they have a problem with that, then they can, I don't, they can, they can go away. Why do you think you're so attracted to music? Because music's fine as hell. Damn girl, come here. Come on. Come on, let's go. let's go. Let's go listen for a few hours. Final question that I'm taking here today because this is probably far too long and I apologize for that, but is it mentally exhausting and draining listening to records back to back while trying to form a comprehensive opinion on the songs? I've been trying to do many reviews and I'm feeling drained from music. Just kind of want to listen to the same record on repeat for a week just to clear my head and crave something new again. Couldn't imagine doing this on a larger scale and being expected, quote unquote, to check out tons of records just for content. Hope all is well. Well, Isaac, this is actually a huge thing. I actually recently touched on this in an update video, but yes, listener fatigue is absolutely a thing, and I've really been struggling with it for like the past year or so, because sometimes, like you said, I just want to listen to the records that I love, and I don't have time to do that, because like right now, I'm at a spot, like I'm in a time period where I'm having to like work a lot more at my other job, like this past month or so, and the music that I am listening to, I'm like having to rush around, form opinions and everything like that, so yeah, yeah sometimes it totally sucks, and I get bummed out on it, but uh, those times are the times where I just have to put it all down. Sometimes I have to walk away for a few days and then I come back. It is a constant struggle, and I won't say that it's always the easiest thing, but when you do get back into the swing of it, it is very rewarding. That's it for this episode of Dear John. That was my big, massive Q&A. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. And no, I'm not gonna make the cliche joke. You gave me your cues. Now watch uh, me show me... Wait, hold on. Wait, I, I totally messed that up. Wow, let me show you my A. No, not doing that. Not walking into that territory. I hope you enjoy the video. Drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you were brand new. If you're able to support my channels on Patreon, it's the annotation over in the corner of the screen. I just opened up my new $5 a month slots where you can get personalized recommendations on a monthly basis. If you would like to see the last episode of Dear John, tap here or another recent video right here. I'll see you very soon on ARTV.